All right, everybody. Hope everybody has their piece of paper and uh, is ready to take pride in what they do. That's right. So there's your piece of paper. Okay. So to what we're going to do is put a graphic organizer together that's going to be explaining what happened during the fall of Rome, or I should say what happened after the fall of Rome, what happened to Rome. So we're going to start it off like this. What happened... to Rome. So what happened to Rome? Write that question right up there at the top. I am going to just put a real blunt answer. It divided. It divided. So what happened to Rome? It divided. All right, so do that to your paper right there. <clears throat> very good, very good. All right, so... It divided into, let's put a line down the middle of this. Divided into the western, I'll put this on the other side, right, right over here, somewhere right like this. The western, the western Roman Empire. It divided into the Western Roman Empire and the, should be easy, the Eastern Roman Empire. All right, good deal. So we have the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire. Okay, so a few things we're going to look at. We're going to find out. First, we're going to call it what we call the What's the called the common name? All right, so let's write right over here, write the common name. This basically means just another name, okay, for each of these. All right, so for the Western Roman Empire, its common name will be the Holy Roman Empire. All right, it's, it's going to be called the Holy Roman Empire. That's the, uh, the, the, the Western Roman Empire. Now, the Eastern Roman Empire is going to be known or become known as the place or the name of the place. It's going to be called the Byzantine Empire. Very good. So we have the Eastern Roman Empire called the Byzantine Empire. Whole Western Roman Empire called the Holy Roman Empire. <clears throat> All right, next, <clears throat> we're going to be looking at what's called the, the religion. What religion do they have? Now, they both will call themselves Christians. They're both Christians. Well, they call themselves Christians. All right, this is going to be called the Roman. All right. Catholic. This is where we get our Catholic church. The churches, the Catholics we have today, this is where they got their start. This is our Catholic church starts in the Western Roman Empire, the largest Christian group in the world today. Now, another extremely large group that very people know very little bit about in our world today is called, it's from the Eastern Roman Empire, it's called the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Eastern Orthodox Church or Orthodoxy. And they're all Christians. Eastern Roman Empire has Eastern Orthodox Church. And the Western Roman Empire has the Roman Catholic Church. So that's what it should look like so far. Very good, very good. Okay, now, who is, all right, now we're going to look at who are they led by? Who is their leader? Who is the leader of each spot? Okay. So, the Western Roman Empire and the Roman Catholic Church is going to be led by the Pope. Okay, the Pope and whoever he decides to be emperors. And emperors. Now, I put the Pope first because he 
all right, will anoint or choose a lot of the emperors in the West, okay? Now, the Eastern Roman Empire is going to be led by who's called the Patriarch. Patriarch. And he is like the Pope to the Eastern Orthodox Church. Now, the Patriarch and the Pope, they don't get along very, very well after a while. All right, but the Eastern Roman Empire is led by the Patriarch, and also they have emperors. Okay, very good. Very good, very good, very good. Makes sense to everybody? Good deal. Now, we need to know the name of the capital. The capital, the capital of each place. Should be pretty simple for you guys. Here we go. So the capital of the Western Roman Empire is, what we've been looking at for the past while, is Rome. That's right. The city of Rome in Italy. And the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire was first called Byzantium, then called Constantinople, and today is called Istanbul. But in this history context, its name is Constantinople. All right, later it'll be called Istanbul and in Turkey. So there you go, there's our capital. Now, I'm gonna focus right here on Rome for just a few minutes. And I'm gonna use, let's use blue for that, okay? Blue. Now what's gonna happen is, let's go in, the year is 476, okay? 476, all right, now we got this guy, I don't like saying his name because I always mess it up. He happens, Odysseur, Odysseur comes in and takes over the city of Rome in that year and we officially call this the fall, all right, into, so Rome is going to fall into something. It falls in this year. This is the year that's finally done. There's lots of things that lead up to the fall, all political, social, economic, military, but it falls into a new topic. It falls into the dark ages. Falls into the Dark Ages. That's right. Falls into the Dark Ages. So 476, Rome falls into the Dark Ages. We also, or also called, there's a restaurant named after this, all right? Also called Medieval Times, okay? Medieval Times, that'll be a topic we'll talk about later on. All right, and then after that, or which actually is a part of this, at the end of it, and then the, kind of the end, this is where you'll start your ninth grade year, the Renaissance, okay? So that's what's happening with the western part of Europe. Falls to the Dark Ages, which is the Middle of the Times, and then to the Renaissance, okay, so... That's that, not that important for our topic because we're mainly focused on the Eastern Roman Empire. And I'm gonna do this one in red. All right, so what's happening here is Constantinople becomes wealthy from, wealthy from what? Trade, that's right. All these folks are coming in out of Constantinople because of where it's located between Europe and Asia and the Black Sea and the Aegean Sea. All right, <clears throat> very good. Now, it's most famous emperor is, all right, you know this guy's name. His name is Justinian. Justinian. There you go, Justinian. So the wealthy from trade, its most famous emperor is Justinian. Now, why is he famous? First thing. He is famous for the Justinian Code. The Justinian Code. Okay, so this code, and what did it do? 
and made laws easier to understand. Made laws easier to understand. Good deal. So, wealthy from trade, Justinian, code, easier to understand. <clears throat> All right, so he's also famous. Or I should say he's, she is famous. All right, he's famous for his wife. Before his wife. All right, remember her name? Her name is Theodora. Wife Theodora. That's right. All right, now why? She fought for women's rights. Fought for women's rights. And what else did she do? She saved Justinian. Saved Justinian when? During the Nika Rebellion. The Nika Rebellion. All right, very good. This is a little graphic organizer that should help you understand what's going on. Get a good look at that. Let's see if I can get it all in there. Yes, get it on your paper, put it on your Weebly. You guys are amazing. Thank you for paying attention. We're out.